Button mushroom farming in Kenya is arguably one of the most profitable yet capital friendly types of farming. They can grow in almost every part of the country provided there is shelter, reliable water supply and stable temperatures of between 15 to 30 degrees. Mushrooms are the spore-bearing fruiting body of fungus. They are highly nutritious, playing the meat in the vegetable world. They have of late captured the attention of the Kenya's farming community with most mushroom farmers boasting of amazing profits. They are land and rainfall independent. These edible fungi are a great source of lean protein, antioxidants and essential vitamins. To start growing mushrooms, you will need a structure, preferably a permanent one. This is to create a good environment for the mushrooms. They need humidity and protection from harsh weather conditions. Secondly, you will need to purchase the mushroom spawns which you will grow. Button mushrooms, we need to compose the material like the wheat straw, a process that we add value, we put nitrogen supplements, we turn. This process takes about 30 days to complete. Then we sterilize this material and spoon. That's we add this mushroom spoon. It will take another one month in the incubation when the spoon is colonizing. And then two months and ten days to start fruiting. Then we can harvest for two months. So the cycle here is we can say is four months for this mushroom. The mushrooms demand in this in this country is upwards of that tons to forty tons a month. But the demand looks still higher because we still have gaps. And that's the reason why we're having imported mushrooms from other countries like Rwanda and Holland. Um, for the oyster mushrooms, the, order, the, the demand is not very high because it's about three tons to five tons a month. Shiitake is a popular mushroom. It's becoming very popular. And the demand is about 300 to 400 kilos. And we are unable to meet the demand because the mushrooms we have in the market are imported from Holland also. The Ganodama is also a popular, a popular mushroom in this country. It's grown for its, for its medicinal purpose. The demand is also growing because people require to be healthy. What kind of structure is needed? Mushrooms do not require huge tracts of land to grow. All you need is a house to keep them warm and humid. Using locally available materials such as wood and mud, you can construct a structure of 10 by 17 feet. It is important to note that when constructing your structure, first, temperatures need to be below 250 degrees Celsius. Second, humidity levels should be above 75%. This doesn't mean you need an air-conditioned unit. If you have an iron sheet structure, you can attain these conditions by placing papyrus mats underneath the iron sheets and lining the ceiling with polythene to control the heat. Further, line the floor with polythene and then on this, sprinkle a layer of wood shavings soaked in water. Contrary to popular belief, the room doesn't need to be dark. If you have a room with windows, just cover them with a mosquito wire so air circulates but no insects get in. You don't need to block out all the light. Not necessarily. The, the, the room doesn't have to be always dark because you see, you need to inspect, you need to work in, in those rooms, and you need adequate light. So you can incorporate light, natural light or artificial light to enable you to, to do that. How do you prepare the substrate? Since the crop doesn't grow in regular soil, you need substrate which tends to be treated agricultural waste. You can use wheat, rice, husks, dry banana leaves, groundnut shells, or bean or coffee waste. But in variety, it takes an intensive five weeks to prepare substrate before you can spawn mushrooms. You have to keep watering the substrate and on the fourth day, you can add chicken manure to provide the required nitrogen nutrients. Leave it for another two days and keep sprinkling water. Add urea at this stage to increase the nitrogen in the substrate. You can use sunflower and molasses to provide fungi and a crippling media for the mushrooms. Move it to a shaded area to shelter it from rain because by now you want to start losing water from the substrate so that it can start decomposing. Keep turning the substrate every day but now no water is added. A nitrogen fertilizer and lime are added to balance the pH within the substrate. 
gypsum, a product from the mining companies, is added to absorb excess water since you do not want the substrate to be too sticky or too dry. The substrate is then taken to a sterile room for 7 days where the stream is used to heat it up a temperature of about 60 to 65 degrees Celsius where no contamination can survive. After that, the substrate is ready for broadcast and it is put away in gunny bags and taken to the growing room which must be clean with a temperature of 23 and 28 degrees Celsius. Pasteurization of the mushroom in India, we use steam. Uh, we can also use, for people, for the farmers who don't have the facility for using steam, we can use recommended fungicides, insecticides, mite sites, and nematicides. One of the advantages of mushroom growing is space. We require very little space. And uh, the structure that we are going to see is a small structure, but the output is quite big. So inside this structure, we control the climate, we control the temperature, we control the relative humidity, we control the CO2 concentration, and to some extent, the air moving in and the right. So all these ecological conditions are necessary for the mushrooms to fruit, and that's what makes it different. The mushrooms that we cultivate and the mushrooms that grow in the wild, the mushrooms that we cultivated, we control the conditions so they fruit the amounts and when we want them to fruit, that's the difference. Like any other crop, this mushroom has pests and diseases. One of the major diseases, not one of the major pests is, are the rats that are going to affect our crop at incubation, the first 15 days. So we need to control the rats in, because the rats can come into our crop and burrow. And rats would be a vector of diseases because wherever they are coming from, they will bring in diseases. The next pest will be mushroom fries. We have two types of mushroom fries, the scarids and the forids. We need to control that they don't come in at this stage of incubation, the first 15 days. We need to make sure that the environment is free of debris and vegetation. We need to make sure that the substrate has been pasteurized well in order to control the, 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 the larvae for the fries. The other pest that is notorious for in mushroom growing are the slugs. Slugs are notorious in this crop because most farmers are using simple houses and the slugs will be able to hide in the cracks or the mud houses. We also have other pests that are minor, but the, the, the major ones would be fries, slugs, and rats. The diseases. This mushroom is white. It's supposed to go to the, to the market white or gray without spots. If you find that the mushroom has spots, they could be affected by bacteria. So there are bacterial infection, there could be fungal. We also have viral infection. All this is going to interfere with the service of the mushrooms and the color of the mushrooms, and the mushrooms will have spots. So the farmers are advised to be hygienic, to be very clean in all the processes, because some of these diseases are brought about because of not following hygiene, proper hygiene. Planting mushroom seed. This stage is all about getting the seeds from the experts and planting them. You can purchase the spawns from Jaquat at a cost of 600 per kilogram. You will also need cotton wool and methylated spirit and a pair of gloves. Use the spirit to sterilize the gloves, mix the spawn with the sterilized substrate and pack the mixture in small gunny papers. The 2 kg of spawn mixed with the substrate gives about 50 small gunny bags. We suggest instead of buying spawn, a substrate that is not spawned, buy spawn that has been substrate that has been spawned by us because we will mind about the hygiene, we will mind about the, the quality. So it is safer to buy spawn that has already been inoculated. Make a hole using a finger on the bed 2 inches deep and plant spawn at a spacing of 9 to 12 inches. Spawning rate is 7 kilograms of spawn per ton of wet substrate. After planting the spawn, sprinkle some spawn on the surface of the substrate to accelerate colonization and prevent contamination. The mushroom growing is a bit technical, uh, it's an art, it's also a science. So I would advise anybody who would want to go into this farming of mush button mushrooms to first come for training at these institutions. It's very important because we have looked around and seen that there are people who have started without 
having the necessary skills and they have failed miserably. Many farmers have lost money because of doing this or starting this without having to consider acquiring of skills and information. So uh, the first thing to do is to come for the training, get the skills so that you can be successful in this farming. During the incubation state, put the gani bags into the darkest corner of the structure away from sunshine for about 21 days. Once the spawns are visible as white grainy particles on the growing bag, add about 2 inches of good soil onto the growing bag. This process is known as casing. Casing will trigger fruiting. Casing material preparation is done outside the mushroom house. The materials include real garden soil with enough humus. Serve it to remove the stones and spray formalin which disinfects the soil. Cover with polythene sheets and let it remain covered for two days to kill any soil fungi, nematodes and tiny insects. Apply a layer of 2 inches deep of casing soil on top of the mycelium. When mycelium appears on the surface, you will trigger fruiting. It is very important at this stage to introduce humidity into the room. You can do this using a humidifier or using a knapsack and ordinary clean water. Spray the air around the room and also the floors and wall using the knapsack, ensuring the water comes out as jet of mist. The humidity is important to stimulate the mushrooms growing. You can uh, improve or you can raise the RH by watering the floors. Like for example, what we have seen, we are using shako dust. You can also use um, rice husks or wood shavings. You can also use a spinning disc humidifier like we are seeing. A spinning disc humidifier uh, will bring up the relative humidity from 20 to about 95% in only 10 minutes. So it's, this is an equipment that is recommendable for serious mushroom growers. When it comes to harvesting, note that mushrooms are highly perishable, so it's best to have a ready market before they're ready for harvesting. Okay. The, the, this structure, if we consider the, the buttons, we can fit two tons of substrate in this house. And from the two tons, you can get each turn will give you 200 kilos of mushroom in this cycle, in the cycle of four months. So if you consider the two turns, can, giving you, each turn giving you 200 kilos, each kilo will cost, you'll sell at 700 shillings. As a, as a crop progresses, it accumulates pests and diseases. So at the end of the four months, before you bring another crop, you, you remove this old crop, you, you clean your structure and then disinfect before you bring in a new structure to put, um, a, to, put, to put stop to the cycle of pests and diseases. After 10 or 14 days, depending on how long it took for the spoons to come up, the mushrooms will be ready for harvesting. The mushrooms will be harvested for one and a half months. A kilo of button mushrooms goes for 600 Kenyan shillings.